I'm wedding and portrait photographer Vanessa Joy. I've been doing this for over 20 years and I would love to tell you about the very first lens that I recommend to people when they're ready to upgrade from the kit lens they got with their camera. Now this does depend on what type of camera you have so I'm going to run you through the gamut. Let's start off small. This is the Canon M50 Mark II. This has a special line of lenses, the EFM line. It's also a cropped sensor. So that comes into play when determining the best lens for you to get next after the kit lens. I like to recommend lenses that have a fixed focal length because pretty much undoubtedly the one you got with the kit has a variable aperture. Meaning out of nowhere your aperture might change on you or your picture might look darker or lighter when you're zooming in or out with your lens. It can be pretty frustrating especially if you're just learning photography. Heck, I find it frustrating when I shoot with lenses like that and it's just not doing the job that I'm expecting it to do. This one is the EFM 22 millimeter F2 lens. This goes all the way down to F2, the maximum aperture of F2 and it's just a really nice lens for this camera. Because this is a cropped sensor, you're not getting the distortion that you think you would get out of a 22 millimeter lens. Not only is this lens gonna do a great job in low light, being able to go to F2, but it's also gonna do a really nice job shooting portraits, families, and even wider things like landscapes and buildings. It's great for street photography and it focuses nice and quickly so you don't have to worry about that noise that those kit lenses sometimes make as they're zooming in and out and trying to find focus. Another nice thing about this lens, it's not going to break the bank. In fact, none of them will hear. You can get this lens for $199 refurbished right on Canon, or you can get a brand new for about $250. Hey, can you stop right there and I can tell you just a little secret? I have something called Photo Insiders that you might want to be a part of. Photo Insiders is a master educational community for photographers where you will learn the ins and outs of things like posing, lighting, flash, continuous lighting, and a mix of all of them. With new educational videos every single month behind the scenes and on location shoots with real clients not models this is just fun stuff watch how I troubleshoot my way out of situations did that flash see my camera settings and see my images raw as they come out of the camera exclusive content that you will not see anywhere else high speed sync allows you to raise you could watch a million YouTube videos and still not get your questions answered but within the community of photo insiders you'll be able to ask your questions that I will answer in live group coaching calls. Never feel lost or frustrated behind the camera again, but instead confidently create the photos that you envision every single time. Inside the community, you can also talk shop and collaborate with other photographers. So you can not only elevate your craft together, but boost your marketing and overall business too. You'll have access to all of my bonus materials, things like contracts and my email templates that are sure to put money in the bank. I wish I had something like this 20 years ago when I first started learning photography. Join my exclusive community at Photo Insiders and learn alongside a group of creatives that are going to help you elevate your craft. See you there. Now let's move on to the DSLR camera. I have here the Canon Rebel T7. This is also a cropped sensor, but believe it or not, I'm still gonna recommend a lens that's gonna be a little bit tighter for your next lens after your kit lens. This is the EF 50 millimeter 1.8 lens. This is what we lovingly call a nifty 50. It goes down on its aperture a little bit lower than this 22 millimeter. It goes down to 1.8 and it's still nice and fast focusing. Now I will say this is older technology, so it's not going to be as good as the other version I'm about to tell you about. But if you have a DSLR camera, this is your lens of choice for your next lens that you're going to move up in. The 50 millimeter just gives a really nice range of view, even with a cropped sensor. It's going to be a little bit closer to 82 millimeters, but that's still a beautiful portrait lens and great for shooting outside and getting a nice blur background, which I find a lot of people want from that second lens that they buy 
outside of the kit ones. Moving on to the Canon R10. If you have a camera like this or the R7, that's newer technology, mirrorless takes the RF lenses and is a cropped APS-C sensor like this one. I'm going to recommend this 16 millimeter lens. This RF 16 millimeter f2.8 lens is absolutely a favorite of mine. It sort of acts like a 32 millimeter lens because of the cropped sensor. So it's not going to get a ton of distortion that you think you would get out of a 16 millimeter lens. I have thoroughly enjoyed photographing with this lens doing portraits a little bit more environmental not quite so much up in someone's face but it's also great for groups landscapes street photography skylines anything like that now this is an rf lens so it's newer technology so no it's not going to be 89 dollars but it also has extra perks like this nice control ring and it's nice and smooth there's no stops to it and you can set the control ring to control a variety of functions on your camera a lot of people like to set it to white balance and you can control the white balance make your photo warmer or cooler from there like i mentioned it's a little bit more expensive so this lens right now is 2.99 finally moving on to a full frame mirrorless camera i do have the canon r here but this lens i recommend as your next lens after your kit lens on any full frame mirrorless camera it's a beautiful lens and it's the updated version for mirrorless cameras of this nifty 50 that we talked about for DSLR cameras. This is the RF 50 millimeter 1.8 lens. So it's going to go nice and open down to 1.8. It's what's considered a fast lens because of that. You'll be able to shoot portraits. You'll get that blurry background. It's really a gorgeous lens and it's coming in at only 179. That ain't bad. This is a full frame camera, so you're going to have a 50 millimeter and get the most use out of that lens that you can. So you don't want to get super close up with this lens on someone, but as long as you're working your angles and your light okay, you can get pretty close. You may have noticed that all of these lens sort of, sort of hover around the 35 to 50 millimeter view, depending on the crop and all those things. And that's just because I think that it's a very practical lens to buy next. They all are also nice and low on their aperture. The exception would be the 16 millimeter only going down to 2.8, but that's still pretty good. And they're all fixed. So it's not a variable aperture moving around on you depending on where you're zoomed. So I hope I have given you an idea of what lens you should buy next after you've bought a camera that has that kit lens and you're ready to move on. Hit like, subscribe, leave a comment, and let me know if you think there's some other lenses I should include in here. I'm sure you'll help out someone here in the comments. I'll see you next time. Bye.